All right, guys, hopefully the um, project went okay for you. I was starting to check some out last night just to see if any of you had submitted it, and they looked okay um, so far. But if um, you need more time, I know I said 8 a.m. on the agenda, but then I was looking on Schoology, and I had set that timer actually for 3.30 this afternoon. So certainly if you need more time in class today to get that done, and you're watching this right now, go ahead and do that. Um, you will have to come back and watch this later, though, because I'm going to come in on Monday assuming that you know we're pretty much starting in 2.2. But here's what we're going to do in 2.1. We're going to start um, talking about categorical variables again. And we did this back in Chapter 1 with bar graphs and pie charts and um, things like that. But we only looked at one categorical variable like color or gender or, you know, just something on its own. And now we want to see, like, okay, what if we compare two things? Like, what if we think a certain gender prefers a certain color, right? Well, now I'm kind of pairing the color variable and the gender variable up and trying to see if there's, like, an association between them, right? Now... The one thing we need to talk about when there are two variables is that uh, one of them is going to be um, sort of the response to the other, right? So we'll have a response variable um, when, with one of them. And then, of course, with one being the response, then there must be another one that explains that response. And so we call that the explanatory variable. And so essentially, we try to think of like which one causes which one. So a response measures the outcome. Whereas an explanatory is the thing that helps us predict that outcome or helps us predict that response variable. Um, sometimes there isn't a clear one. Uh, you know, I'm trying to think like if I say um, my favorite color versus the day of the week, it's like I don't really know if one's causing the other, you know, and it's. That's kind of an odd example, but just trying to think off the top of my head is, you know, what would that look like? Um, but let's see if we can find one here. So we want to identify the explanatory and the response variable. So explanatory um, and the uh, relationships below, All right. So I'm going to put an E and an R, one for explanatory and one for response, so we can just sort of have a label for each one. Um, but let's look. So class in school, so whether you're freshman, sophomore, junior, so there's one variable that we're looking at, on whether or not a student is allowed to stay up past 11, right? So we'll just call that bedtime then, whether they have a bedtime at 11 or not. Um, so I would have to imagine in this case, these are two you know, sort of categorical variables, what class, and then can they or can they not stay up, yes or no. Um, I'd have to imagine your class is probably going to explain whether or not you can stay up late or not. So I, didn't, in this case, have to say that class is going to be our explanatory and response will be our bedtime. And the reason being class is probably explaining bedtime. I don't think bedtime is going to explain your class. Certainly if someone tells me, um, you know, they have a bedtime of 1130, I, I can't automatically assume, right? I don't think that's causing them to be a senior. Um, but you know, they might be, but yeah, class is certainly probably causing bedtime. All right. Political viewpoint. So whether you're conservative, a liberal or moderate in the gender, right? So let's get our E and our R again. So we've got our political viewpoint, and then we've got our gender, and we need to think, okay, is one explaining um, the other? I don't think political viewpoint is going to explain your gender, but I do think possibly your gender could explain uh, how you align politically. So in this case, I would say that gender is probably uh, our explanatory variable, and based off that, then political viewpoint is our um, response, right? I'm also kind of saying this out loud, um, but if you want to write this in here, and you can do go back and do this for the first one, but what I'm saying out loud and I'm not writing down is gender explains viewpoint, right? That's kind of the reasoning behind uh, my answer here, and you can say that up top for, you know, class explains uh, the bedtime. All right, so what do we do with two variables? Uh, well, back with categorical variables, we were making pie graphs and, and um, um, bar graphs. And now we're going to kind of stick with bar graphs because it's really hard to compare two things in a pie graph or a pie chart. So we're going to go with the first segmented bar graph. And then, you know, we'll also maybe make a mention here of the side by side. Um, we actually saw a side by side in chapter one. I was talking about, I think it was like Twitch viewership between Fortnite and uh, PUBG. That was really early on. Um, and there's a picture of one. Um, it's essentially, you know, you've got your categories along the bottom. 
So like what superpower would you want? And then the other thing we're comparing that to is whether you're female or male, depending on what you think the coolest superpower is. So we create a category for each superpower, or then we create a bar within that category for each, or like how many males wanted that superpower and how many females wanted that superpower. So pretty similar to what we were doing with bar graphs before, just adding that extra bar since there's a comparison going on. But here's a segmented, and this one's new. This one essentially um, breaks it down into uh, male or female, and it adds up to 100%. So segmented will always add up to 100%. These bars will go, so our y-axis will always be up to 100. And then we sort of color code, or we'll create a key. I don't know that we'll necessarily color code here because we can't do that on like a test or a quiz. But we'll create a key that kind of talks about how much or of, um, you know, for example, freeze time. There's that much in that category and that much in that category. So we clearly can say that, okay, males think freeze time is a cooler superpower than females do. And we can start to draw conclusions from that. All right, so let's get, create our own here. So over here, right, um, we'll say that, you know, sometimes these are called um, stacked just because... They are stacked on top of each other, okay, bar charts. So I'm not going to read through all this, but essentially we're creating a bar chart. So make sure we're labeling, scaling, our axis goes up to 100% on these ones. And then, of course, we want to include a key. All right, so let's make a segmented bar graph for this one. It's um, whether you have allergies, yes or no, you can see that over here, allergies, uh, versus whether you're male or female, all right? So uh, just keep in mind that these, let me get my highlighter here, these are our totals here, so they're not actually going to be a part of the graph. They're in the total category for each row and each column. So it's these numbers right here that we're most concerned about. All right, so we'll come over here, and I think a good way to do this and I don't have this on notability, so I'm not going to be able to draw straight lines as well as you guys are. Um, let's put male and female on the bottom down here. So male and female. And we'll just label that gender. And then over here, we'll just call this, whoops, we'll just call this, uh, let me fix that, percent. It's not going to let me erase that one, but that's okay. So we'll just call this percent, and we do need to let this go up to 100. So I'm going to count by tens, I think. 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. And unfortunately, this recording software doesn't um, play nicely with small writing. So I'm going to label that one as 10 because I feel like it's kind of difficult for me to label all of these. Maybe I'm going to plot 20, 30, 40, 50 also just to have a couple different marks that I'm not going to label every single one. All right, so let's do this. So we've got our two categories, male and female, and we want to break this up into whether or not they have allergies, yes or no, right? So we come up here and where you look, let's just start with the female one, right? Here they are. 50 said, yeah, I have allergies. 80 said, no, I don't have allergies. But the big thing to note is that the total is 130, right? Within the female category, we don't want to include any of the males in that category. So Yes, I know there's 227 people total in this, but those include some males, right? Specifically, 97 of them are males. So I'm only going to take everything I do out of 130. So here's the two things I'm going to calculate. I've got 50 females who have allergies and 80 who don't have allergies. And of course, that is out of 130. Both of those are, right? Because that's how many people. All right, so let's get these two percentages here. Right, so we'll grab our calculator here, and we'll do 50 divided by 130. So I'm going to bound, I'm going to round this. Um, actually, I'm just going to call this 38%, which then would make this, without even needing really a calculator, 62%, or about that. And yeah, I'm actually going to double check it. Yeah, 61.5, round that up, 62%. So let's come over here, and we're going to, oh, I did females first, and they're over on the far side here. So I'm going to draw my first bar up to 10, 20, 38. So maybe right about here. And then the rest of it, so the other 62%, which will go up to 100%, is going to be here. All right, so let's do this. Uh, let's create a little key while we're thinking about it. Over here, uh, yes, no. I'll just even call this Aller. Geez. All right. 
Um, so since we're not going to be able to like use highlighters and other things unless you bring them on their test or a quiz, which is fine with me, I usually like to maybe make one of them. Actually, let's do this. Let's let one of them be blank because that makes things really easy. And the other one just be striped. So we'll let no be striped. What was our no? It was the 80. So, um, yeah, 80, 80 females said no allergies. So that's the bigger one. So we're going to stripe this bar and we're good to go. Now we have a key. We know what that, which one's which and uh, all is good. All right, let's do males. Um, so we've got now, you know, out of 97 males, uh, we've got 34 out of 97 and 63 out of 97. So 34 divided by 97 is about 35%, which then leaves this to be 65. Oops, my six there. 65%. So let's graph those. So we got males go up to 35. So not quite as high as females. And then, of course, the other remaining amount is there. And uh, hopefully, like I said, you can get those lines a little straighter. All right, was uh, 63 had to be no, so this is also our no category, and there we go. And so it's it's pretty easy. It's it's you know not too bad. Yeah, there's a little math that's involved in it, but again, um, you get those percentages, and um, for each category, and, and and you plot them. All right, so to wrap things up here, we want to figure out how do we talk about these graphs. So we want to say whether or not there is an association in these graphs, right? Whether these two variables have any effect on each other or not. And just like with um, bar graphs initially, it's very subjective, right? But if we see a pattern or we notice something, one bar is bigger than the other in one category, then we're certainly going to say it. So there's an association between two variables. If knowing the value of one variable will help us predict the value of the other, Right. So, for example, in my gender one, we can see that there's an association because some of the bars are bigger in the male versus the female um, uh, two bars. So, for example, freeze time. Like, I happen to think that if someone were to tell me freeze time is their super, you know, favorite super superpower, I would have to think like, okay, they're probably male because more males think that's a better superpower. Whereas females might say that they like to be telepathic more, right? Um, that blue bar is much bigger in the female category than it is the male, right? So we, we know there's something there. So let's look at our um, allergy one again. And this is the same problem we just did, but computer generated instead. And uh, they actually flip-flopped the no and the yes. So they put the no on the bottom and the yes on top. I want to state that because I want to be clear that it doesn't matter uh, which one you you know, do first. Um, they also put male and female backwards on the x-axis. So um, just kind of up to you. But in this case, <laughs> there's really an argument. Uh, I can see both arguments here, you know, whether or not there's an association. These are pretty close to the same. I think it was like 35% versus 32%. But I guess at the end of the day, we could say, you know, there seems to be a slight, like a very slight association between gender and allergies. Um, you know, females, uh, are slightly um, more likely to have allergies because this red part is bigger. So, uh, yeah, there, let's just jot that down. There seems to be a slight association. Right, females... are slightly more likely to have allergies. And there we go. All right. So yeah, just being able to say whether or not you notice something in there, and that's that's about it. Um, please use the word association. That's going to be our big kind of buzzword for a few sections here in really this chapter. But yeah, there we go. Um, I don't have any homework for you tonight. I, I decided to hold off on it um, just for the weekend and everything. So if you need to go finish up your project, go do it, get it turned in. Um, remember, it is a formal paper, so make sure that... Um, 
you know, you've got it typed up, you've got your introduction, you've got your name on there, things like that, just like you would in an English class. Um, so yeah, get those submitted and I uh, look forward to checking them out. I should have your tests in. I know that you guys took them last week and I, I never really sit on them this long, but with me being sick, that really threw things off. So um, they should be in hopefully today and uh, you can check that out too. So I will see you guys on Monday. Um, thanks for your work this week. Hope you have a good weekend.